Martin production, starring Buddy Epson, also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars in alphabetical order, Sharon Acker, Diana Douglas, Charles Durning, Hayden Rourke, Barry Sullivan, special guest star, William Conrad. Tonight's episode, the Deadly Conspiracy, Part 2. leader, Mr. McKenna himself. He's involved in a criminal conspiracy, and it's heavy. All right, give. The complications, Tom, it's close to unbelievable. Hold a second, please. Can you monitor a public telephone? And we have intercepts on every line in or out of the building, sir. All right, record call. She begins to say anything dangerous. She has a connection. And if Miss Grady intends any serious action against us, I'm afraid you have to terminate her. scratched by Doris Grady. They set me up, Mr. Cannon. They put me in a box. I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. I couldn't do anything. You know. I'm not a man anymore, Mr. Cannon. I'm impotent, obstinate, and a very super lady. I understand how you feel, Tom. Why did you call me? She said she had proof that the man she worked for, Bud McKenna, was involved with something criminal and big. I don't want to talk to Gordon. Not yet. Until this is all over. Not with what you tell me about these men, these investigators. Cannon and Jones? Huh. Relax, bud. You messed up letting Doris find that memo. But it's covered. He is expecting your call. Oh, bud, hello. It's good to hear your voice. I've got an old friend of yours here, Matt Vanner, who's still refusing to sell us his company. Nothing personal, Gordon, but Montana Uranium's my baby. IRI's big enough to buy the whole state of Montana. Just leave me my little bit. Is he still refusing us, Gordy? Hey, he's still holding out, but I'm not giving up. Matt, I'm ready to sweeten the deal. Not enough sugar in all those Hawaiian acres of yours. What is it? Mr. McKenna, I've faced that. And the fact that I've inherited his shares in our company. I know IRI made him an offer. More than just an offer, Miss Vanner. We had a number of very good meetings. I'll look over this offer, but uh, frankly, I don't think we're going to be interested. I thought sure with him gone. Well, we underestimated the power of genetic inheritance. Well, the Vanners are an unlucky family, and Laura is no mining expert. Accident isn't unlikely. He won't accept your call. What? I told him you were already half soused. Gordy set you on me. His own secretary. His own lousy spy. But you can tell him from me that if he won't accept my call, the next one will be from the police. Now get out! Must have been desperate. 
your safety glasses hard to break. Watch your eyes. Acid. Either fuming nitric or a type of hydrofluoric. A man facing indictment for murder might commit suicide. But he wouldn't bother to weaken his windows with acid first. But all of the evidence pointed to Bud McKenna. Well, then we'll just have to look past him, dig out new evidence. That's three murders now. Doris Grady, Matt Banner, and Bud McKenna. And we still don't know why. McKenna had to hit that glass pretty hard. You either had to be pushed or thrown against it. Pushed? By whom? There was no one in the office. Except his secretary, Alice Parks. Alice Parks? The only other human being in the office, and that's the reason you're going to investigate that lady. You used to be a top-grade legal secretary, Betty. I'm sure the IRI would be delighted to hire you. Dave told Chuck has some friends and personnel. We'll arrange for an opening in a legal department for you near Miss Parks. And we'll start digging into the life and times of Bud McKenna. Lord grant forgiveness to the troubled spirit of Bud McKenna. Now that he is freed of the agonies that... They just got word this morning, sir. Now Miller has been placed in a psychiatric facility. Out of mind, out of sight. That his spirit will find rest in your hands. A government contract notification reached Montana Uranium today, Gordon. Mr. Craig Laura Vanna, very happy. Providing she's sensible. If she accepts my offer, we get Montana Uranium. If she doesn't, that contract will go right up in her face, and we get Montana Uranium. Bud McKenna is mourned deeply by all of us, but especially by his brother, who loved and cherished as only a brother can. For what bond is so deep as common blood? Now I take this time to ask Mr. Gordon McKenna to carry out his final wish. As far as we're concerned, Bud McKenna committed suicide, and until there's any real evidence to the contrary... I happen to have here the chemical analysis of the window glass in McKenna's office, which indicates that it had been weakened by acid. I think that warrants investigation. IRI might not agree. IRI can pressure me, but they don't give me orders. All right. I'll open it up. Sorry I messed up your report. Oh, that's all right. Oh, Barnaby, do you have any other evidence? No, but I might come up with something soon, like why McKenna got himself killed and how that ties in with a mining operation in Montana. Capital. Not anymore. I've just confirmed the go-ahead on a major government contract. Oh, yeah? What kind of delivery schedule? We don't have to make a delivery date. We're going to be licensed to set up our own uranium enrichment operation right here with government financing. Oh, wow. 
We're not equipped to handle enriched uranium. That stuff's hot, really dangerous. We're not going to build an H-bomb, Roy. Just make the government happy, and us a little rich. Sounds good. Banner, uh, Barnaby Jones is uh, Frank Cannon. Hello. I called you earlier. And I told you then, my father died accidentally. In a plane owned by International Redevelopment, just after he turned down their offer to buy your company. You said you didn't have any proof. Oh, just a few coincidences. But McKenna was handling the negotiations for IRI, wasn't he? Yes, and I told him we weren't for sale. The refusal must have been a big disappointment to him because he stepped out of a 23rd floor window. A suicide? Or murder. Again, connected to Montana Uranium. <sighs> this still doesn't make any sense. Now, we're a small company. IRI could acquire 10 Montana Uraniums, and it wouldn't be worth any more than a footnote in their annual report. I understand you have a brand new government contract. For enriched uranium, yes. That's the stuff they use in military atomic explosive devices. Isn't that? that makes you a rather special company. Who did your company deal with in Washington? The Pentagon, of course. And one of my dad's personal contacts, Senator Dan Knox. Uh, Knox arranged Tom Lochner's transfer to Washington. We checked Senator Knox out in this manner. He's tied to IRI closely. Of course. They do a lot of government business. Dan Knox was a friend of my father's for over 15 years. <sighs> I'm sorry, I just can't believe in some insane conspiracy. Oh, you don't want to believe it, Miss Banner? I'm sorry, gentlemen. My new contract means a lot of work. I've got to get at it. No reason, no logic. But another dead end. Yeah, up here, so far. Maybe Lieutenant Biddle has come up with something new on the uh, McKenna murder. Murder, huh? You saw the technical evidence, John. Yeah, your evidence. And on the basis of that evidence, I stuck my neck out and reopened this case. That winter glass was treated with acid. It certainly was. And so was the glass and seven other windows on this floor. Well, I gotta admit, this kind of throws me. You got any explanation? Very logical one. His windows are washed automatically twice a week. Somehow acid got mixed in with the detergent. By whom? The company's checking their records now. And I must say they're being very cooperative. Well, that's fine, Miss Enright. I'll just show you where the photocopy machine is. Now, uh, this is, uh, Lieutenant Biddle, Sawyer. Tell him. I'm real sorry. We... We use this acid to clean the stone surface. I, I don't know how it got into the detergent. I was real careful when I mixed it up. We'll analyze it, Mr. Corcoran, but I'm sure it'll check out. And I'm very grateful. Glad to be of help. Gee, I had no idea that that was switched. Uh, I think you'll find it checks out, Lieutenant, on account of it was planted. On seven other windows? No cause to make McKenna's phony suicide stick. Maybe it wasn't phony. My problem is trying to explain to my superiors why I ever opened up this can of worms. I'm going to give you one warning. Any more meddling, and I will be forced to do my damnedest to get both your licenses lifted. Case closed. another, do you? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not much of a match for you. Well, I'm expecting a long-distance call. See you back at the office. Easy, but I think she's beginning to trust me. We're even going out to dinner tonight. Did you learn anything? I thought you'd never ask. Alice Parks was Gordon McKenna's private secretary for over 10 years and his mistress. Well, when the uh, chairman of the board gets his private secretary to work for the vice president, 
That could mean he wanted her to spy for him. If she did that, she might have kept records. Well, she has all her confidential notes in a memo pad, which she takes home with her every night after work. You uh, say that she's invited you to dinner tonight, Betty? Mm-hmm, yes. You think you can keep her busy for a couple of hours? Well, it shouldn't be any problem. She's also invited me to go with her to her health club. She's a fanatic about exercise. What time would you be going to the health club? Oh, dinner about 7, uh, 8.30, I imagine. Why don't you give me the address of the place? I'll just sort of mosey by around 8.30 just to be there. Good. Don't give me time to get in and take a good look at the ladies' apartment. It's uh, 1132 South Motor. It's healthier to eat after you exercise. You'll feel marvelous. Okay? One, two, one, two. you've got to be made of rawhide and piano wire. Well, I try to keep limber. <laughs> Come on. Oh. And here we are. We use this room for self-defense exercise. It's really perfect. Listen, Alice, really, I am... I'm dead tired, and I really am hungry. Could we just go and eat? But I promised to show you some holes. Oh. It'll only take a few minutes. It's a marvelous sport. Yeah. Here, let me demonstrate a simple hip throw. Oh, oh. oh you didn't oh. land well, dear. Oh. One of the key things is learning oh. how to fall. Oh, Alice, this is a superb way of keeping fit. Alice, listen, I really don't want to. Never try to grab, dear, or you could be taken by surprise. Oh. You know, I was surprised to learn how curious you were about me. I caught my hand. Of course. I must be very careful with this kind of training. Somebody could get seriously hurt or even killed. Why were you so curious about me? What is it you wanted to know? I have friends who know where I am. Your father-in-law, Mr. Jones? Mr. Cannon? I won't be worried about you for quite a while yet. So, ah, tell me, Betty, oh. why are they so curious about me? What information do they have that makes them so nose? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Betty. Oh. Be honest. You'll fall. 
You kill me. It'll prove that you killed Bud McKenna, and we know who gave the orders. Paul Grin's a mess, and you're nothing more. Well, I guess it's time to go for the more advanced holes. <laughs> Mr. Jones. I'd like a little more of an explanation than that. We were having a lesson in the art of self-defense. So useful for a woman of my age. I Translating, Betty. I want that woman in jail. All the action plans on Montana uranium were in my notes, Gordon, in detail. And now Jones and Cannon have them. It's bad. We'll I'll have to stop them. No, not really. They were Bud's notes for Bud's plans, and Bud is dead. Alice, you can't be held responsible. You were a secretary who simply took notes. Nevertheless, might be a good idea for you to take a trip. Europe, maybe? No. I won't be shipped off like that, Gordon. No, no, no Alice. A vacation. A vacation with pay. Lord knows you deserve it. Let's say a quarter of a million dollars. And a regular stipend. I don't want to be with you. Gordon, I know things can't be the way they were between us, but the world is full of pathetic little people, and you're so much more. You're going to change history, and I want to be part of that. I want to share that. Alice, I want you with me. We'll go to Europe first, and then maybe Africa. You better get your passport ready, and all the necessary inoculations. First thing tomorrow morning? Mm-hmm. I've always loved you, Gordon. I'll never change. She means that. Unfortunately, she could have killed that girl. She's completely unreliable. Handle it. Alice? I don't mean kill her. Handle it gently. She deserves that. I want to thank you all for being here today, General Stanford. That's a big step, Miss Vanner. The first uranium enrichment facility under civilian control. Montana Uranium's a pilot project for the whole industry. Figured the least I could do is give it sort of a starting cheer. Everything's ready, Laura. Onward and upward. Anybody hurt or killed? No, thank heaven. The accident wrecked a totally automated section. The only damage was that. And it's covered by insurance. You think IRI wrecked it? I can't prove it. Officially, the accident is my fault. And now, of course, the banks and my board of directors are going to be pressured to move me out. 
and accept IRI's offer. Sell my company. I don't care about the company. They killed my father. What can I do? Well, we haven't been able to put this puzzle together yet, but we do think that one of the big pieces is Senator Daniel Knox. <sighs> I've finished transcribing. Find anything? A lot more details on how they plan to take over Montana uranium. You know, it really sounds like a military operation, including the plan to remove Mr. Vanner. I'm sorry. I know Dad was murdered, Betty. What about motive? Why does IRI want Montana uranium so badly? Oh, it's never mentioned in here. The new enrichment process? I don't see how. It might add, oh, a million and a half to our annual earnings. But IRI takes that much in every eight hours. What about military value? After the uranium's enriched, it's under military guard. And it's countered by the gram. I'm sorry. It just doesn't make any sense at all. IRI was ready to do just about anything to get Montana uranium. Now, there's only one man in their organization with the power to arrange that, and that's the chairman of the board. That's Gordon McKenna. You think he killed his brother? Uh, Corcoran probably arranged it. Don Corcoran, vice president, public relations at IRI. An unlikely job for a retired Marine Corps colonel with a brilliant military record. McKenna buys only the best. Anything on McKenna in there? No, uh, oh, wait a minute, yes. Uh, meeting scheduled for the 18th. Mr. Gordon McKenna will chair it personally. 18th? It's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Where? There's just a name here, Damocles. Is that Damocles as in Sword of Damocles? As in Threat? That could be a place, a person, or a code. I wonder if Tom would know anything about that. Hello, operator. I'd like to talk with Mr. Tom Lochner, in the United States Attorney's Office in Washington, D.C. And if he doesn't have an idea, we run into the same dead end. Now, we've got no choice. We've got to do some pushing on the one person who took those notes, Alice Parks. I know it'll never stand up, but if you swore out a complaint against her for assault and battery, it might just give us enough leverage, huh? It will be my pleasure. You're a basket. You're gonna have two sore arms, Alice. Well, you better hurry up, Sam, because I've got to get my passport reduced yet. <laughs> the girls at the office told me she had checked it out. She's definitely here in the hospital, in isolation. Any reason given? Doctor's orders. His name is Holbertson. Samuel Holbertson. You can't see Miss Parks. The doctor left strict orders. Dr. Hobertson, these men insist on... Seeing Miss Parks. I'm sorry, that's impossible. Then we'll have to get a court order, doctor. Very well. It's tragic. She had a violently toxic reaction to a combination of inoculations. The effect is permanent. Severe brain damage. Poor Miss Parks. For all effects and purposes, she's a vegetable. of an answer anyway, right out of Senator Knox's office. I told him I had to contact him on business, committee business. Is he attending McKenna's meeting? Absolutely. He left Washington yesterday. Only I couldn't find out where it's being held. Not even a smell of it? Well, I think it's being held in the ocean somewhere. His legislative assistant told me he bought some seasick medicine. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Damocles. Pardon me, that has to be shipped. That has to be registered. 
come on, let's go. So the mine can be back in full operation inside two weeks, Mr. McKenna. I kept the damage to a minimum. You did a clean job, Dennis. We should complete the Montana uranium acquisition by July. You'll continue as chief engineer. Six months, you take over the president. Thank you, sir. Now, if you'll excuse us. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, we've had a number of meetings. We've all talked. I think enough to begin to understand how our interests might fit together. Interesting. The first to refresh everybody's memory, Yvonne Nielsen, shipbuilding. Hideki Ito, representing the Oturi Industrial Group. Iron ore, Hanesh Bakshak. Here, Egon Kramer, Europacia Kamad's Bank. Premier Kamim Ali, Tungsten, Nickel, Magnets. And Monsieur Jean Saint-Viance, Sulfur, Chemicals. And Sheikh. Habib Kuri. I own nothing. I control nothing. Nay, verily, man is aggressive in wickedness when he seeth himself possessed of wealth. <laughs> Habib Kuri, gentlemen, is a man of his people. His people who sit on top of the sand, which sits on top of 60 billion barrels of oil. Together, gentlemen, we own control influence enough of the world's resources to influence the world. Power. Certainly. But I am already powerful. Why join with others to get more? To do more. Gentlemen, we are the only sane members of the multinational organizations. We can enforce that sanity. We can create a golden age and moment. Gentlemen, we can make the future. Impressive. But there is one necessity, oil. For a price. Bib Curry, I'm prepared to pay it. You said that a year ago, six months ago, again and again. Your words, Saidi McKenna, are like the wind. Yes, but the words are done. IRI is acquiring Montana uranium. The government has licensed them to enrich nuclear fuel. I'll be curious, I can guarantee you, within a year, enough enriched fuel to give your nation full atomic capability. Military capability? Exactly. Creating a new balance of power in the Middle East, in the world, for all of us. Not yet. I've heard about the killings, all the trouble. I've heard all the promises. I must have proof. Gentlemen, I believe you all know Senator Daniel Knox. Gentlemen, I've gotten the legislation. Montana Uranium will be in charge of an enriched uranium facility. With your military in control. Exactly. Gentlemen, I'd like you all to meet General Todd Stanford. I just returned from Montana Uranium's number three mine. It'll be in production inside of a month. We'll be able to deliver in three. Listen, Allah. Nahum, Ra'uf, the name of God, the compassionate and the merciful. I agree. Mr. Corcoran, would you advise the captain that we are ready to return? Yeah, McKenna's job for Damocles. And transportation's coming. And here they come.
Habib Khoury. <laughs> He's somewhere between 50 and 100 billion barrels of oil. Are you saying McKenna's the link-up IRI? That's right, Mr. Calvelli. The meeting was held on his boat right after his company took over Montana Uranium. I see, but you've got no proof of any conspiracy. Yeah, but what does all this add up to, a music festival? With Senator Knox and General Stanford. Well, that's terrific. You want me to send the antitrust division against the United States Senate and the Pentagon? Why don't you start with IRI? You get Gordon McKenna and the whole thing will fall apart. For meeting with a group of very powerful men? There's nothing illegal about it. I mean, we don't know that there is any agreement, cartel, or conspiracy. Habib Khoury doesn't have to join with anybody. He's got it all. Look, McKenna has to be offering him something. What does Corey want? <laughs> Not money, Alan knows. Luxury, no. The man's aesthetic. Power. Power to bend the Middle East his way. Nuclear weapon? Ah, uh, Mr. Jones, that material is highly guarded. Yes, by uh, General Todd Stanford. Dear God. That's why they wanted my company. And sabotaged your plant to get it. While that plant was operating under a U.S. government contract, I might add. You know something? You're all innocents. This man here is a heavyweight, Knox. The odds are this whole thing would get quashed, no matter what I did. So you're not going to do anything? Did I say that, Mr. Jones? Did I? You know, my father runs one of the finest apple orchards in Conowima County. I can always go back to picking. It happens that I'm a government bureaucrat. It's no job for a sane man, right? Except it happens that I'm here because I care about this country. So do we, Mr. Calvary. I'm going to open a full throttle investigation of IRI, including the three alleged murders. Thank you, Mr. Calvary. More than that, I want your help. Now, you know your plant inside out. I want you to go up to Montana. I'll contact the FBI there to assist you. I want you to bring back evidence of that sabotage. Calvelli. Oh, he can be rough if he gets on a crusade. Are you positive? We have a friend in the Department of Justice. Uh, Cavelli met with Cannon Jones and your staff investigator, Tom Lochner. And they're cooking up an investigation. Oh, no, Gordon. I can't squash a Justice Department investigation. I'd be crucified. You'll have to risk it, Daniel. I've got political enemies. You have a marriage position. You want to risk your career and your marriage against those photos? All right. I'll squash the investigation. I'll try. And you'll manage. I trust you, Daniel. Jones and Cannon. I want them terminated. The razor stink, Mr. McKenna. I want them dead.
left the chopper crash? Yes. I was supposed to get in touch with him as soon as I could reach the phone. Where is he? Well, he's waiting up. The branch. The cannons. That's all I know. Jones and Cannon left Montana late this morning. Your pilot failed, Cochran. He's in jail for attempted murder. It is possible he talked, told them he was hired by me. Oh, no. I'm assuming that Jones and Cannon are coming here. Good. Pilot can always change the story afterwards. After what? After I killed Jones and Cannon. Ready? Move. IRI, but he doesn't think he can take down McKenna personally. Hmm. Murder, conspiracy to murder, attempted murder, except it all points to Corcoran. McKenna's still in the shadows. <laughs> media campaign first in several mid-sized cities. Cincinnati, Omaha, St. Louis, right in America's heartland. Good, if we can move public opinion, maybe it'll help me get the legislation to Congress. Daniel, we don't move public opinion, we create it. Hmm. Now, is that easy? It will be, it will be. Mr. McKenna? Command Corcoran is dead. He gave us a dying statement that nails you to the wall. 
Have you had an accident, Mr. Uh... Jones, Barnaby Jones? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, I've, I've heard of you. In connection with the murder of Doris Grady? Or Matthew Vanner? Or your brother? Well, it's a cheap and ugly innuendo, Mr. Jones. You've had an accident, yes, but that's no excuse for slander. Slander, McKenna? We have Cochran's statement that you ordered those three murders. He's going down, Senator. You still have time to turn government witness, unless you want to drown with him. You're saying that Mr. Corcoran committed these crimes? Well, frankly, I find that very difficult to believe, but even the mere possibility I find chilling. Yes, I gave Mr. Corcoran considerable authority. He had my trust. But you're asking me to believe that he abused that trust and committed these crimes in behalf of IRI. You're saying he committed those three murders on his own? All I'm saying, of course, is I knew absolutely nothing about any of these actions. I had absolutely no responsibility. And if he had anything to do with the death of my brother, Reports of my death were exaggerated, Mr. McKenna. And you were damn quick to lay all the blame on me. Galvelli's investigation, the pilot's statement, Corcoran's testimony. I think you're dead, McKenna. No, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I'm a wealthy man. IRI has infinite resources. Our legal budget is perhaps larger than the Justice Department's. Oh, I may be indicted, yeah. There may be a trial. And it'll drag on for years and years and years, but in the end, I'll be vindicated. And what will I be, Mr. McKenna? I hope, Mr. Corcoran, that you'll be sensible. Just hang tough. And I'll hang alone for God, for country, and for International Redevelopment, Inc. I think I needed a cause, Mr. McKenna. Something to believe in. But your brand new future world, it's your own reflection in large. There's no room for anybody else and no reason why I should trust you. I'm deserting, Mr. McKenna. Don't use your intelligence. We have a common interest. No, Mr. McKenna. I'm no longer interested. I guess that just about wraps it up. Well, what can you expect from a professional killer? A man whose alliance knows no boundaries except his own skin. Don't do it, McKenna. It's suicide. Gordon, don't be stupid. We can't. You'll never make it. We can work this thing out. I have the world. You want me to settle for pity, bought with bribes? You want me to hang by a suspended sentence for the rest of my life? No. <laughs> say it, but uh, how about celebrating over dinner? All of us. Well, um, we're still tied up with Calvelli. Yeah. Why don't you two go ahead? Hey, that's a good idea. How about it? I'd love to. Bye. Bye, bye. Now, as to dinner, you know, I have discovered a restaurant, Barnaby, that I'm sure you're going to love. It's called Cornelia's Country Cooking, and they fry everything from grits to coleslaw. <laughs> it's your kind of place, old friend. Well, Frank, you know I love country cooking, but uh, not exclusively. Uh, matter of fact, I was about to recommend uh, the Pomerol, Tordown British Chef, uh, sophisticated wine cellar. Oh, well, let's go. 